I'd like to start off by doing a, a, a brief survey, maybe by a show of hands. I should be able to see some out there. Uh, this looks like a good bridge. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It uh, looks big, sturdy, strong, right? Who wants to maybe drive across it or feel comfortable driving across it, right? Maybe some people, I hope. A couple of raised hands, okay, great. All right, that sounds good. How about this? This is the Knot Bridge in China. Lots of ups and downs and curves and stairs and steps. It's a pedestrian bridge, but you better have your, uh, you better eat your Wheaties before you start out on this one. This might take you, uh, take you a little bit of effort to make your way across this one, right? How about this one? This is a real bridge. This is steel and wood and concrete and asphalt and pavement. Ready for a drive? Yeah, 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 okay, looks good, right? Okay, well, we'll get back to this one later. Let's talk about bridges. By way of introduction, I'm a civil engineer. That's, that's true. My dad was a civil engineer. My uncle was a civil engineer. And now you know where I get my handsome good looks from, right? Okay. Their father before them was a railroad engineer, also a civil engineer. This is a uh, photo from the Soviet Union, probably in the 1920s time frame. Okay, he's the, he's the gentleman, the tall gentleman in the red circle there. What is a civil engineer? Well, actually civil is short for civilian, uh, as opposed to military. There used to be two kinds of engineers, uh, civilian engineers and mili military engineers, so civil is short for civilian. It has nothing to do with how nice and personable I am as an engineer, but I like to think that I am pretty nice and personable as far as civil engineers go. The American Society of Civil Engineering says that this is what a civil engineer does. A civil engineer is someone who takes care of everything and anything that has to do with your life has to do with the environment, the roads, the bridges, the airports, the tunnels, the, the highways, the houses, the environment. Everything that you deal with every single day is what a civil engineer works on. So you can thank a civil engineer next time you take a clean drink of water. Next time you open your refrigerator and the food inside is nice and cold and the little light comes on. You can thank a civil engineer when you come home at night and the light turns on in your house. You could thank a civil engineer when you take a ride on the road, hopefully no potholes, to or from work. You could thank a civil engineer when you go through an airport and take a plane on the way to visit your friends or family. And you could also thank a civil engineer for the recycling that he or she does to help keep your environment clean and preserve it for generations that are to come. I'm originally from New York City, uh, and I recently took my family to visit New York City. Uh, my children, in, as we drove around the city in the car, remarked, wow, there are a lot of bridges in New York City. And yes, there are. These red bees are all bridges. And these are just the big ones. There are lots of little bridges over little rivers and streams. These are the big bridges in, in New York City. So we had to cross a lot of them to get to the, do the different things that we were going to do. In college, I studied structural engineering and for my senior thesis wrote about the effect of uh, an earthquake on a bridge that's standing on a foundation that may or may not be that strong. And it turns out that the foundation of a bridge is just as important as what the bridge is made of. When I started my first job, yes, that's, that's me with a little bit more hair. <clears throat> Uh, when I started my first job as a, as a young professor at my first university, I was the new kid on the block, so I was given lots of those fun jobs that new faculty are given, uh, and I had to organize an open house. And as part of that job, I had to work with students, middle school, high school students, in a balsa wood bridge competition. And we put these bridges in between two tables, uh, we hung a bucket from the middle, and we filled those bridges, filled those buckets with uh, gravel and uh, it, it made a lot of noise going in, and then when that thing came crashing down, it made all kinds of noise. The kids loved it, it was a big mess, and you know, that's always a good time when you're making a big mess in the middle of a university, so. Um, I've studied lots of bridges, steel ones, concrete ones, uh, br bridges that are built for cars, bridges that are built for trains. I've studied, uh, there, are, there are also uh, wooden bridges that can be also for cars or for people. This is a, a classic example of a, of, of, a, of a bridge. You can expect cars to walk, cars to drive all over it. 
This is a pedestrian bridge, probably in a, in a romantic, uh, you could take a romantic stroll through a garden or through some woods, built for people. And sometimes when you see these kinds of big bridges that cross these huge ravines, they're, they're for trains, okay, because they have to be big and strong. Now there are some bridges that are also for cars that look strong and sturdy, and this one may look familiar to you. But then there are also some bridges that, boy, I don't know if I want to be driving over this bridge. Yes, those are clouds. That's how high that bridge is. So that when you drive on that bridge, it is possible you will be driving through clouds. And you can see a little bit of the ground below uh, uh, towards the right side of the uh, screen there. That's, that's how far down the ground is. So, uh, all right, but if, next time you go to France, this is the bridge you want to drive on, trust me. Uh, there are actually also two bridges here in, at, at least two bridges here in Cayman. The, the, the first bridge is the, uh, that one on top is the uh, Esterly Tibbets extension just north of the public beach. And before you know it, if you look to the side, left or right, wow, you are just above the ground there. You are driving over a bridge. And of course, this uh, last one, this uh, second one here is uh, recent, is part of the recent uh, Kamana Bay uh, expansion, uh, expansion uh, activity. And I drove under it for the first time three days ago when I, when I got here. As I thought about this thing called the bridge, I realized that bridges have basically one purpose in life, one sole purpose, really. And that's to get you from over here to over there. To connect what's going on over there to what's going on over here. And that help where it is important, because it's not like a bridge can actually take you and move you from one place to the other. Okay, It's not going to do that on its own. It can only help you get there. And so I think there are two points to consider here. First is that bridge has to be the right bridge for the right job, in the right place, at the right time. Are there going to be earthquakes? Is it going to be windy? Are you designing more for cars? Or are you designing your bridge for trucks? Or perhaps trains? Maybe just for people. Is it going to be always warm there, always cold? Are you in Alaska? Are you in Cayman? Or is it kind of a temperate climate? All these factors enter into the bridge building process. Henry Petrosky, a civil engineer, a world renowned, said that a, if you build the bridge right in the first place, it can stand for a very, very long time. So if you do the right job for the right bridge in the right place, it will last a long, long, long time. This is our friend, Galloping Gertie. Uh, we saw her before. This is the uh, bridge over the Tacoma Narrows River in Washington, northwest United States, and sometimes it gets real windy there. This was built in the 1940s. Uh, that was a real bridge, concrete, steel, uh, asphalt, and eventually the wind and the flutter and the vibration got to it, and it eventually fell down. We learn a lot from things like this about how to build bridges and to, to avoid repeating the mistakes that we made when we built that bridge. This is a bridge that connects China on the left to the island nation of Macau on the right. Uh, and the bridge looks like a regular bridge, you know, you got some approaches on the left, you go over the water and, you know, there you are. It doesn't look like a big deal, right? But when you think about it, let's take a look at the traffic pattern. The traffic pattern, you're in China, you start off in China where they drive on the right, and you come onto the entryway, you drive around, you loop around, you go up, you loop around to the left, and then when you get ready to cross the water, where are you? You are on the left side of the road. Like in Cayman, the people of Macau drive on the left side of the road. But in China, they drive on the right side of the road. So here is a clever example of the right bridge in the right place, doing the right job at the right time. The second point to consider is that when you're ready to make that crossing, you better be committed to taking that first step. Uh, walk across the Golden Gate Bridge or the Brooklyn Bridge sounds like a great idea. People do it all the time. But are you sure you want to go there? Are you scared of heights? Are you going to be warm enough? It's going to get cloudy and windy and rainy. Usually it does in San Francisco. You better be prepared. I mean, when you're halfway across that bridge, yeah, what's the point of going back? You might as well keep going, right? I mean, you just it's the same distance, just keep going. When you're, on an, when you're in a car on an on-ramp to a bridge, you can't say, ah, no, I changed my mind, and then go backwards. When you're on that on-ramp, when you're crossing that ravine, you are committed to making that journey. This is an example of, it's called the glass bridge. 
The reason it's called the glass bridge, it's a pedestrian bridge, and the thing that people walk on across the, great, across the ravine is made of glass. So when you're looking, when you, when you start crossing that bridge, you look down, you can see 200 feet below you, okay? This is a scary thing for most people. For me, I'd be terrified, but talk about being committed to make that first step. And I thought to myself, you know, it, at times, people are a lot like bridges. Only we don't know that we're doing this. Bridges help people get from one place to the other. We, as people, also help each other get from one place to the other. Political commentator Bruce Jackson said that bridges are perhaps the most invisible form of architecture. And why is that? Well, for, well this is the Moses Bridge. Well, it's got some fancy name in Dutch, but people call it the Moses Bridge. And why is that? Because instead of going over the river, from one side of the embankment to the other, you actually go through the river. When, you, when, when you're walking in that bridge, you see water on both sides of you. And literally, you're, I mean, your head is above the, above the uh, concrete level there. So you see water on both sides. The bridge literally parted the water so that you can go through the water, which I think is a really cool way of building a bridge. And so it occurred to me that also people can be like bridges. We can be like bridges when we help each other, when we do the job right, when we help people in need, when we help each other get to where we are going. And how do we do this? Well, for example, there are children that are sometimes in need of support, in need of advice. We can be the bridge for them. How do, we, how do we help them? Well, we can join big brothers and big sisters, for example. Or if an organization like that doesn't exist, start one or start another one if, if, if more help is needed. We need to be ready to answer the call to help the children see a path to where they are going. Sometimes, young adolescents overwhelmed by college and books and choices and plans and careers and jobs and internships and where do I go, where do I stay? We need to be the bridge for them. We need to help them perhaps understand that the pressure, yes, the pressures are overwhelming, but they can be managed and they will get to where they are going. Young families sometimes need a little bit of help. When they start a family, there are lots of questions, lots of choices, lots of decisions that need to be made. When my wife and I started our family, we moved 600 miles away from Grandma. And unless Grandma drove those 600 miles, or we drove those 600 miles to see Grandma, there was no babysitting, there was no meals on wheels, there was no rest for the weary. So what did my wife do? She started this group called Moms and Tots at church, where young parents and young children would, would bring their young children to church and meet for social for uh, support, for advice giving, for caring, for sharing. She became the bridge that allowed others to get through that time in their life. And sometimes friends, strangers even perhaps, need a, little bit, need a little bit of help. There are so many choices out there that they need to make, so many decisions about, their, about career choices, where to live, where to work. Sometimes we need to be the bridge for them. Or two, un or two companies, or two universities even, that are perhaps considering joining to chart out a better path, a different path, a way to better meet the challenges of the future. The interesting thing about that kind of connection is that just as a real bridge when it connects one side of the river to the other side of the river, those parts of the, those, those embankments, that, that groundwork, those, those sides don't really change that much. So when companies or universities join, you can still have, you can still be true to your core, true to your mission, true to your values. But when you do join, you are able to perhaps meet the challenges of the future a little better. We all have bridges in our lives. Sometimes we have to build them. Sometimes we have to find them. But when we do find them or build them, we will cross them. Joseph Fort Newton, a man of the cloth, a writer in the early 1900s, 
said that we build way too many walls and not enough bridges. What do you do? Are you a wall builder? Or are you a bridge builder? Now I hear what you're saying. Okay, oh my gosh, building a wall, that's so much easier. I mean, what do I, what do I, what do I gotta do to build a wall? I, I, I need um, uh, some, some bricks, or so, uh, some concrete. I stack them up, I put them in, and look, I got a wall. Hey, a wall's easy to build. But a bridge, oh my gosh, what do I do? They're so big, there's so much to learn. How do I do this? Where do I go? What do I do? Not to worry. Whether you are an Android user or an iPhone user, doesn't really matter. There are hundreds of apps out there, trust me. There are hundreds of apps out there that are free. See all, the, see all the kids in the audience getting their phones out. Yeah, this is okay. This is, this is the one time when they can get their phone out. Okay, JD? Right? All right. Anyway, so you can download for free bridge building apps where you can practice your bridge building skills. So later on, you could be a civil engineer too and build some more bridges for us. We are all travelers through life. And I believe that we should aspire to this noble ideal, that we should help each other like bridges that stand there and do their jobs quietly and for very long periods of time, we too need to help each other and actively help each other along the paths that we take. In other words, we need to be the bridge for each other. We were all put on this planet for a purpose. I believe we all have an important job to do. And we all need to leave this planet a much better place for the future than what it was when we joined it. In a sense, well, like Bridges, we have an important job to do. And we will, the work that we do will outlive us. Bridges last for hundreds of years. Our work will last for a very long time if we do it right. Bridges are, bridges are helpful. Of course they're helpful. They help you get from point A to point B when you couldn't do that before. But more, but more so, bridges are also hopeful. Hopeful gestures because a bridge, while it's built to fix a problem in the, in the present, a bridge is also fixing problems in the future. So bridges are hopeful in that they intend to make the lives of people who come later better, not just those who are here now. Like bridges that stand tall for many hundreds of years, work that we do will outlive us. I believe that when we work together, we can accomplish great things. Like a bridge that helps travelers along their paths, we too can help each other. And when we help our fellow travelers, we become the bridge that takes everyone from the present to a much better and much more hopeful future. Thank you.